this book. Frida Anderson is our special guest demonstrator tonight. This is her book, Fabric to Die For, and she's going to be giving us a nice sneak peek through the book and some great tips and techniques for dyeing and getting successful results. And just to, so that you guys understand, with um, these slides that pop up, you can drag them around and move them around your screen however you like if they're in your way. Alrighty, so I'm going to take this one down and uh, I'm going to ask our guest, Frida, to go ahead and hit Ask to Speak and get into the queue. And uh, without further ado, I bring you Frida Anderson. Welcome. Hi everybody, thanks for coming. It's great to be here tonight. I'm going to talk to you about uh, one of the chapters out of my book. There's a chapter about dyeing fabric flat outside. One of the great things about this hot summer weather is that it's really uh, great for dyeing outside. And I'm going to give you a couple of tips about dyeing outside that will help you be more successful and have more fun with it. First of all, you want to set up an area that you can be comfortable working in. And I get some of those big uh, molded plastic tables that you can get at the Home Depot stores. Um, Lisa, you want to go ahead and put up the picture number one. And if you get one of those uh, tables and you get it out in your yard and you buy yourself some um, PVC pipe to prop it up, so I just have regular plumbers uh, PVC pipe so that it's at a nice working height so that you don't uh, get all bent over and uh, worn out out there in the sun. It's the only time I get to actually get a tan and work at the same time. <laughs> and you notice that I'm uh, working with squirt bottles there. I think it's really great to have some very practical usable squirt bottles and I get these from Dharma. Uh, who was it was telling me they were getting their, their socks? Priscilla, is that you that's getting socks from Dharma now, the bamboo socks? I like the ones, the little squirt bottles from the companies rather than using the bottles that you have left over from ketchup and stuff like that. The ones that you buy from the companies are softer and uh, you can squish them better and they have a better nozzle on them. So they're not very expensive. They're worth the investment. So if you haven't tried dyeing outside, uh, like I said, this hot, perfect weather is great for it. First of all, you can lay out all those uh, fat quarters that you dyed if you did the gradation in the book, and they will dry in uh, less than a half an hour. I put a couple of things out in the yard today, and they dried in about 20 minutes. I did a couple of pieces of really pretty silk outside because I needed to get them in the mail um, tomorrow before I leave and they were dry in like 20 minutes um, which is uh, one fun thing then you can bring them in and wash them and use them all in one day dye them in the morning and wash them and use them in the evening that's kind of perfect if you're going to dye outside and you're going to use the tables um, I suggest that you also make yourself some platters you can put up picture number two, Lisa. I have people, I'm going to just leave my glasses on and look stupid. Um, picture number two, which is showing, um, I'm sorry, that's 1A. So that was the, yeah, picture number two. These are styrofoam platters that I have made out of insulation. You can buy these at the Home Depot store, too. And they come in four foot by eight foot sheets and if you cut them into quarter pieces then you can have four really lightweight platters. I cover mine in plastic and seal them up with uh, duct tape and then I can use them over and over. I've got one right here inside with me. Uh, me. This one you can see a little bit of it maybe. Um, it's actually, well probably not. It's actually about three years old so they hold up really well. And by having those platters when you work outside, then you can put things on them and move them off the table. And I actually then can move that platter right off of the table and um, put the stuff down on the ground. Uh, I'm trying to read what it says on the side here, but I'm just going to keep going. Um, and uh, so I'll pull stuff off of my platters, put them on the grass, and let them lay on the ground or on the concrete, and uh, then I can keep going. If I don't have a platter to work on, my table gets really messy, 
and when you're working outside, it's important that you have access to water. So I hopefully you can have a hose out there when you're working. I also like to keep a nice little bowl of water next to me so I can dip my hands in it, and if I need to, I can wa wipe off anything with um, um, the cloth that I keep out there as well. So some of the things that you can do dying flat, flat on your platter is um, you can take the gradation that I talk about in the book. As you mix them up, you put each different separate color into a squirt bottle. And then if you have all of the dyes in a squirt bottle and contained in your dish pan, somebody was talking about how uh, they think it's going to be very messy to dye. But if you have a bunch of dish pans, I have a whole bunch of them that I keep in my workroom. I have a, probably about a dozen of them. Then it, I will keep my squirt bottles. You want to put up picture number three, Lisa? Um, I'll keep my squirt bottles and my dyes um, in my dish pans. And then if they get a little bit messy, that mess will be contained in the dish pan. It also lets me move them around very easily. And you can see the 12-step gradation um, over there on the right in the blue dish pan that starts out with yellow and works its way all the way down to lime green. Actually, that's 14 step. And I've got um, all my colors right there to work with. So one of the things that I like to do is I'll take a piece of a uh, half yard of fabric that's been pre-soaked in my soda ash. And speaking of soda ash, the place that I get my soda ash, I actually don't buy them from the dye companies because they're so heavy. I buy uh, pool supply stuff. So pH plus, this one is from Menards. And it'll say right down here on the bottom, it says sodium carbonate, and it says up here pH plus. That's the same as the stuff that you get from the uh, dye companies. And um, you can buy them in five pound containers, and they cost about five bucks. It's a much uh, more economical way than to buy it from the dye company. So if you take your pre-soaked fabric and you lay it out on your platter, <laughs> um, and then you take your squirt bottles and you start applying color right onto the fabric, you're going to get a, a, a nice um, array of different colors. You want to put up the slide 4A, Lisa? Yeah, so that's what that would look like dyed outside on my platter flat. I've taken just the different colors and, and that squirt bottle and started squirting color right on there. And, and I'll put the color all around. And this is a really good exercise. Somebody was talking about muddying up their colors. This is a really good exercise to understand how the colors work together. So if you put red and green right next to each other, they're complementary colors, and they're going to create mud, which sometimes we like, but most of the time we want to keep our colors nice and clear. So if you work through your gradation and you keep the um, pretty much the color groups together. If I keep the yellows and the reds together, they're, gonna, um, they're not going to blend into muddy colors. And notice that on that piece of fabric, I've put green next to yellow. And that's going to make kind of um, blue or turquoisey in between. And um, it's just a real good way to understand how colors work together. And also, if you're using those squirt bottles that you get from the dye companies, they have a smaller little hole in them. So when you're putting the um, uh, dye out, it isn't pouring tons and tons of dye on the fabric, and you have a little control of keeping them from blending too much. Once I get all that color then down on the platter, I'm going to take my gloved hand and I'm going to work it around and smooth, squish colors together. Uh, another thing that you can do that's really fun with the platters and your squirt bottles outside is what I call stand and pour. And if you could put up uh, slide number six, Lisa. Stand and pour is I've taken one of my um, pre-soaked fabrics, and I've put it up against my styrofoam platter. And now I'm going to take my squirt bottles. You can see them over there on the right. And I'm going to start applying the dye at the top of that platter and just letting it drip down. So I have that platter actually sitting inside a big plastic container. You know, the plastic containers that you can get to keep your um, gift wrap, the rolls of gift wrap in, so it's about 
uh, 36 inches long and maybe about uh, 10 or 12 inches wide. You can get, get those at Target at Christmas time. That'll hold that big platter. And then if you put another piece of fabric that's pre-soaked down at the bottom, um, all the dye that runs off of it when you're working, put up number uh, seven, Lisa. We'll um, collect on that extra piece of fabric down on the bottom. So this is called Stand and Pour, and it looks very much like a landscape there. You can see the colors that are going across, starting with green on one side and working your way over to purple on the other. This is a great technique for doing things for skies. So I have a piece of fabric here that I dyed with um, two different gradations, one in fuchsia and one in lavender. And you can kind of see that it's sky looking fabric. If I take my fuchsia and I take four squirt bottles and in the first one I put full strength of dye and in the second one I put a half a cup of dye and a half a cup of water and in the third one I put a quarter cup of dye and three quarters cup of water and in the fourth one I put a tablespoon of dye and uh, fill it up with water then I have a gradation in one colorway and if I do say fuchsia and purple I do um, that step down on both those colors, then when I put it on my fabric, I can get different intensities of the dye, and it will look like a, a beautiful sunset. You can do that with blue and turquoise as well, and you'll get this gorgeous um, sky um, gradations. I have a little quilt here that I did with gray, and so the back of this little quilt, it's a little landscape quilt, um, has been done in stand and pour and darker at the top and then it gets uh, lighter at the bottom and then I cut it apart and um, fused it back together to give it an even um, more of a gradated effect in the sky. And then of course one more thing that you can do outside flat is you can use all kinds of things that come out of your kitchen for resist. So I could use, uh, I had on my blog today, guess what this is, and people uh, must have looked and seen, but one of the things that I like to use is just plain old rice, just uh, white rice, don't even bother buying the good stuff, just buy plain old white rice, and if you use that on top of your wet fabric and let it sit out in the sun, the sun will act as a little uh, a resist. You can also use coins. I keep a bag of washers and pennies and um, that will also act as a resist. It needs to be a good sunny day though and certainly we've had a lot of that this summer so a perfect opportunity to get those resists. This is what the fabric looks like with the rice resist. I don't know if you can see. It's a subtle resist but it's um, uh, nice, and it gives the effect of grass, so I will use that in my landscapes as grass. And then this is what uh, those coins look like as a resist. Again, they're very subtle, very subtle texture, but um, nice in our work to have that kind of subtlety and uh, to work with. You can also, yeah, you can use the salt too. If you buy rock salt, you can put salt um, on the wet fabric. And when you do that, be sure that you spritz it with water and the water will help the rock salt make a really beautiful disbursement on your fabric. You gotta play around with that with a little bit. The rice was just sprinkled on top, just left right on top of the fabric in the sun and it, uh, it worked really nicely. It isn't real intense, but it's very subtle. And so I thought I'd show you some of the, um, some of, some of the examples of quilts. Uh, you want to leave it out in the sun till it dries. And really, in this heat, it's going to dry in about 20 minutes. Uh, one layer of fabric, if it's laid out and it's flat, it's just going to dry so fast. Particularly for some of you people that are out there where it's 115, it may not even take 20 minutes. So this is a little quilt that I just finished. I've been walking around 
a lake near my house uh, with my dog, George. We go for a walk every day. And this little lake has um, cattails in it. Uh, so it is my current obsession. And this little quilt here, I just finished it this week. And you can see the stripes. This is actually uh, a Tim Tech uh, frame. And here's the little quilt that I have quilted and then stitched on top of this Tim Tech frame. But here you can see that stand and pour effect. I did a green in the background and then I came back in with a, um, a teal blue on top of it and let it drip down the fabric to create that. Here is a, a, one of my patterns. Yeah, the dye that I'm using is a Procyon MX dye. I buy my dyes from either ProChem or Dharma. You know, I live in Chicago, and it's been my experience that if I order from ProChem, which is out in Massachusetts, I'll get my stuff in two or three days. If I order from Dharma, which is out in California, it takes a good week. So it just depends on how desperate I am to have my dye, um, who I buy from. It's the same product, and they both work really uh, well. This is one of my patterns that I have. It's called uh, Purple Coneflowers. And the, the fabric in the background, this yellow-orange, was created like I showed you in that first slide where I put the dye on with squirt bottles and then squished it around with my hands. This one has orange and yellow, and there's a little green down here in the bottom. Oops, there it is. Um, for the background of that particular quilt. You know what? I don't use urea at all. The purpose of urea is to help the dye dissolve. And if you read my book, um, I use blenders to mix my dye up. So I don't have to use the urea. If I was not using a blender, then I would use urea when I mix the dyes. When I pre-soak my fabrics in soda ash, so I have a bucket of uh, a five gallon bucket that I fill with hot water and I put about a cup of soda ash in there and then I put all of my fabric in that soda ash solution and let it soak and pre-soak in there and then I put it in my uh, washing machine and actually spin the excess water out and have it spit back into the bucket so that my fabric is already damp when I go to put the dye on it. The, soda, the purpose of the soda ash is to bond the dye with the fiber. So you have to use the soda ash in order for the um, Procyon dyes to bond with the fiber. That's why they're called fiber reactive dyes. And they actually will permeate the fiber of the um, cotton or silk or rayon and um, become permanent that way. Damp but not dripping wet, exactly. You don't. You can do it dripping wet, but um, damp is the way you want to go. I'm going to show you a couple of other little uh, landscapes. So, if you put your, if you put those fabrics after they've soaked for about 15 minutes, if you put them back in your washing machine and you put it on spin, uh, all that excess water will spin out and they will be left just damp. And then you, it's easy to work with them. You know, I don't pre-wash my fabrics because I buy my fabrics, they're called prepared for dye, so that they don't have any chemicals or um, starches on them, so I don't have to pre-wash them. But if you're going to use fabrics that you have bought at the, I was going to say at the grocery store, but at the fabric store, it, uh, you want to pre-wash them. You do, because those fabrics, the commercial fabrics, that are coming on, off of a bowl, even the muslin, they have starch and things on them that don't um, let the dye adhere as well. So you want to do what's called scouring your fabric and just put it through a regular wash with um, laundry detergent, and that'll take all of that thing, all of that off of it. Am I on the dyers list? No. I don't use fabric softener. You can um, when you're rinsing and washing your uh, fabric. Uh, you can use fabric softener in, in the final rinse if you want to. But I don't, mainly because 
most of my fabrics, I fuse them. I'm a fuser, and uh, it just leaves another chemical on them, so I don't I don't bother with it. And I, yeah, wouldn't it be great if we could buy fabric at the grocery store? <laughs> okay, there was a question earlier about dyeing one layer as a birth to two at the same time. Oh. I often do dye multiple layers. You can do three or four um, layers of fabric at once, um, as long as it isn't a really heavy or thick fabric on the platters flat. So when I dye silk, you want to see some really pretty silk? When I dye the silks, and um, I use those, do I, do, do I use a color catcher? No, I don't use one. Um, this is a piece of silk charmeuse, and when I do this, look at how shiny it is. Ooh, don't you just want to have some of that in your stash? Um, I will put multiple layers together. And yes, you can over dye commercial fabrics. Absolutely. You can over dye um, black and white prints are really great to over dye. You do want to pre wash them first so that you get the starch and things off of them. Um, also with MX dyes. When I do the silk, I use the Procyon dyes. Um, in order to get really intense color in silk, you need to use acid dye, which is a different process. But um, the Procyon works really nicely with the silk as well. It gives it a softer look. These are silk charmeuse fabric. Aren't they just ooh, so yummy? And I've started dyeing silk and rayon. This is, a, I'm sorry, silk and rayon velvet. I don't know if you can see the sheen in these, but this is to die for, no doubt about it. This stuff is really luminous. Be perfect if you guys are doing um, crazy quilting. If you want to touch it, you can come and see it. Uh, I'll be in Houston in my booth with Laura, and I will be, Laura Wozlowski and I share a booth, and I'll have all that stuff. And shirts, yep, I hand dye the shirts. This one's got lime green in it, and it goes all the way down to orange and pink. Shirts are great to dye outside flat on the platters, as are, Priscilla, your socks and stuff like that. Hand-dyed silk sheets, yeah, that'd be good. So let me just show you a few other um, uh, landscape quilts, some of the skies that I've done. I talked about doing sky. Here's a little uh, farm quilt, and you can notice the drip marks in the sky here. That's done with stand and pour. And here's another little landscape quilt. This one was, the sky was done with the stand and pour as well. And I uh, fused it then, sliced it apart, and fused it back together. Do, um, I do have a couple of silk quilts. I actually have a, a quilt that's going to be in Houston that was um, at the Chicago, I'm sorry, it's not the Chicago show anymore, it's the Cincinnati show. And the, uh, it's a large jack in the pulpit. It's called Woodland Treasures. And the background of it was done with a silk and cotton blend. And then the uh, center part of the quilt is done in silk. And it's about 55 inches square. Do I use sensor Paul? Yes, I do. And I do use dye thickener, absolutely. Um, do I use retain? No. Um, you know, one of the things that I do use to get uh, dye off of my skin is I actually use a, a scrubby sponge. So this rough side of the scrubby sponge, um, after I'm done dyeing, I go back in and, and clean myself off with that. It does take off a small layer of derma, but if you think about it, it like being um, at a spa. That's in the book too. How do you? How do I do the gradation? That's all in the book, so I'm really not going to go over it. Um, so when I do a blend like the sock, the silk and cotton, I use everything that I dye. I dye with the Procyon dye. Um, I don't use any of the other dyes. 
Exfoliating, absolutely right. Yeah, my dye doesn't stay in my glove areas too. That's why I have to go in with the sponge and scrub out. And a lot of times when I go to uh, the store and I look down at my arm, in fact, right now, I have a little um, dye on me from dyeing this afternoon. But if I take that scrubby and go at it, it'll come right off. I think that that works best as well as having a nail brush to clean your uh, fingernails. Really, the only area that doesn't clean really well are your cuticles. They don't seem to um, clean that well. I use um, whatever gloves I can get. And I like the disposable ones rather than having the big heavy uh, uh, rubber ones just because the disposable ones uh, seem to fit my hand tighter so that I don't, I'm not as tempted to take them off. Yeah, paint our, paint our fingernails to match our dye. That's perfect. So um, I don't know, did I miss any questions? Anything that I need to catch up on? I can't really talk and read at the same time. I guess I'm not as multifunctioning as I thought. I haven't tried the protective lotion that gardeners use. What's it called? I wonder if it would, uh, what it, what exactly, oh, silicone gloves. I'll, I'll check it out. We're always looking for new things. Great, that's good to know. <laughs> so, um, I've also started dyeing, and I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. This is actually a silk batiste. So it's, um, it's very, very thin, and um, it's taking, oh, look, it's like a veil. But it's, uh, it's, I'm getting some really great surface design with this. And um, it what surprised me um, about the silk batiste is that it's so thin that I have to be really careful with the dye. I have to use the dye really diluted. So when I talked about making the gradations uh, out of one color, starting with um, the full strength and then going down to half and quarter cup and a tablespoon of dye, when I dye this silk batiste, I'm doing it with mostly uh, a tablespoon of mixed dye and a cup of water. Um, otherwise, the color is just too intense on it. That's what this um, that's what this silk batiste is. It's very much like a gauze. It's that weight. You, I think you can see just how thin it is. But it's really pretty. It's coming out really nice. As is the silk and rayon velvet. And I think the reason that the silk and rayon velvet is so gorgeous is because of the rayon, more so than the silk, to be perfectly honest. Can you see the sheen of that? Um, I have, I, I, I have, have I ever shaked on dye powder after dyeing? Um, I have, you need to be pretty careful when you do something like that. You know, whenever you're mixing the dyes, you want to have your mask on. And so when you are handling the dyes in the powder form, you want to make sure you, you're, you put your mask back on, even though from what I've read, the dyes are not toxic, they can cause allergies. So you want to be really careful. And when the dye is in the powder form, it can get airborne and just move all around. So you want to make sure that you're in a, a contained area. How do you stop fabric from bleeding? I don't know what you mean by that. If you mean um, after it's been washed, how do you stop it from bleeding? You, if, if it's still um, releasing color, you need to wash it again. So when I am washing out my fabrics after they've been dyed, the process that I use is I fill my washing machine with water. I have put in my uh, detergent and I put the fabrics in and then they go through the longest possible wash. 
they go through multiple rinses, and then I do that process again. So all of my dyed fabrics get, get washed twice and rinsed four times. And by then, all of the water is running really clear, and I don't have any bleeding. Um, a good way to test if your fabric, if the dyes have been uh, washed out, is to take your dried fabric and put them on a piece of white fabric and then take a, a hot iron and steam press them. I wash in, um, I start in cold water and then move to warm water. You know, I am not that familiar with the front load washers and I have not researched it since I don't have one, I can't tell you, but I'm sure they talk about that on the dye list. Uh, pressing isn't going to set the dye, no. It's not like with ink and um, um, paint. Uh, the dyes are, are totally different. So pressing it with a hot iron isn't going to set it. You need to make sure that you've washed all the excess dye out of the fabric. Yeah. I, 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 that's one of the reasons why I don't have one of those front loading washers is because they really don't have a lot of water in them. I suppose the way that you could get around that is that you could um, have buckets in your laundry sink and, you know, do multiple rinses in buckets in the laundry sink and then put them in the, the washing machine or take them to a laundromat. They probably wouldn't like that at all. Well, I have pretty much run out of all the things I have to share. If anybody has any more questions, I'm happy to answer them. I can show you a few more little quilts here that I have. Uh, again, this is another, uh, this is one of my patterns called Sister Trees. And the sky was made using the stand and pour and then uh, cut apart and fused together. What is my favorite fabric to color? Um, I'm using a fabric from Test Fabrics. It's called 400M. And the reason that I like it is that it, it's a, a nice medium weight, so you can use it uh, to fuse with or you can use it to piece with. I really love um, Kona cotton. I love the way it takes the dye, but it's a much heavier weight cotton, so I don't use it as much um, because I do so much fusing in my work. But when I'm piecing a, a project, I like to use it. Uh, the fabric that I use is from Test Fabrics, and it's called 400M. And that just is the weight of it, 400M being the mummy. Yeah, when you use a sensor pole, you don't have to use a whole lot of it. The mummy, I know. I don't know what it means, the mummy. I think it's the thread count, really, 400M. I should find out. I should talk to Tess when I go to Houston this year. And ask them. And a, a cotton lawn is a little bit tighter weave of a fabric, so I don't use that. 